Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we're going to be discussing another set of issues from China dealing with CNC chassis. Um, let me give you a little backstory. This particular client messaged me and explained he was having issues with access calibration. Um, we went over, it was a question and answer kind of thing, an email. We went over a couple of solutions. It did not work. I knew something was amiss. We scheduled a consultation. That means, um, again, that the client has to spend more money. Um, we talked on the phone and I knew something was amiss because this client actually had a motor failure. He then requested to purchase a motor from me. I had to special order for the system because this system was actually uh, custom built for him. And having one motor fail on either your X or Y, you never typically, unless you can get the exact motor with the exact specs, replace just one motor. You always have to replace two to keep everything symmetrical. He understood that, went with the purchase, got the motors in and set the machine up and went to perform the access calibration and knew something was off. Uh, the motor's working fine, but the calibration as far as cuts, the trajectory on the cuts were off, his angles were off, he couldn't cut circles. And when he explained to me that it was running ball screws and linear rails, I knew something was amiss. So naturally I made him tear off the actual uh, covers on the chassis as far as covering his transmission. Um, guys, first rule of thumb, when the Chinese assemble a chassis and there's any type of cover on your ball screws or your transmission, before taking delivery ever, always have them show you the machine running in a video and make sure they send detailed pictures. You want to see at least 60 to 100 pictures. I'll say it again, 60 to 100 pictures. You should see that machine. <clears throat> you should know if ever, any piece of paint on that machine is flaked. That's the amount of detail you want to know, especially when you're dropping, you know, between 3 to 10K. That's just crazy to take, you know, just someone's word on that. In this particular instance, this client paid with a wire transfer. Many of you already know you're screwed when you pay with a wire transfer. Took delivery on the system once it left their factory in China. That was pretty much it. Well, after he sent me these pictures, and once again, I always tell you guys to send me pictures because I'm essentially a mechanic working on a car without the car in front of me. There's no way I can fly to all of you. So the more detail you provide me, I can give you the analytics of what we're looking at and forensically we'll figure it out, in which case it didn't take me long. Many of you already see the issue here. For those that don't, let's analyze this together. You can see here we have our centering circle for our stepper motor. And stepper motors have a slight groove. It's a circular groove. It's a, just a circle. And you insert the stepper into the centering circle, and that's what centers the motor on the chassis. Right here, you can see the stepper. Right over here, we can see our stepper shaft. Here is a rigid coupler. Now, guys, when you get a rigid coupler on any axis on your CNC, always ask the manufacturer why. Why would you use a rigid coupler? Well, let's think about that. When you use flexible couplers, flexible couplers allow for tolerance and differences, and that's in alignment. Whether you're using a ball screw, whatever transmission you're using, and typically it's always used on a ball screw transmission, you want to have that flexibility to where that coupler can give slightly, just a couple thousands to make sure everything is nice and true. When they're using rigid couplers, that's a red flag in, in just itself because a rigid coupler means they're preloading that motor with lateral force. Let me explain. What you see here, for those of you not aware of what's going on here in error, is we see our rigid coupler, which is a no-no, and then over here we see the ball screw, we see linear rails up here, linear rail over here, but we are missing a bearing block right here. Okay, so essentially, we have a bearing block on this opposite end over here somewhere that's actually supporting the ball screw, and then the ball screw just simply goes to this rigid coupler and all the load, the lateral load, goes on the motor. So there's your explanation to why the motor's longevity is basically crap. Uh, stepper motors typically have a lifespan of four to five years under general use. Uh, that's not pending a serious machine crash or excessive soft machine crashes and then not dealing with environmental issues like heat. Um, but overall, that's essentially what you'd get out of a stepper as far as life. When you're going through them within a year, something's definitely wrong. When access calibration is incorrect on two brand new motors that aren't the same crap brand that the original unit came with, you already know something is amiss. In which case, once the client removed the actual covers on his transmission, he was aware something was amiss. He just couldn't put his finger on it. You know, something just didn't seem right. 
And he said, you know, I'm looking at this and I'm, I'm noticing and I'm noticing the ball screw is cut so short here. When you guys see a ball screw cut this short, let me explain what chi the China factories typically do. When they're assembling a machine, they'll custom cut a ball screw to fit the machine. That's not uncommon at all. We do it in the U.S. all the time. What is not correct is the fact that they cut the screws and hope everything fits. If it's short, they'll just use a rigid coupler, mount it to your motor, and call it a day. And that's exactly what they did here. So I said to him, I said, okay, well, it's one axis. That's not a big fix. I mean, I've seen it done before on one axis, not such a big deal, but definitely could have been avoided had he said, I want to see a video of my machine running with the covers off, and I also want to see um, really great detailed pictures of the entire chassis before I pay you. Everything could have been taken care of differently, and on top of that, you certainly never want to send a digital transfer of funds. You always want to use PayPal or some type of processor that gives you guys recourse should their issue uh, arise, because we all know we are dealing overseas. And I know purchasing from China now is no different than purchasing in the U.S. from another state. The unfortunate side is once you start importing, there are these type of issues that arise, you're, you're really trusting uh, potentially all of your well-being, especially if you're a startup, on you know a company you've never possibly even met. So think about what I'm saying. So after we analyzed this axis, I naturally said, well, you know what? Have you checked the other axis by pulling off the covers and validating them as well? Now, typically, I've only seen this done on one axis, and usually it's your, at your uh, Z. In this instance, again, this is his... Uh, his x-axis and I also said okay well let's analyze everything you've got so he went under the machine went to his y-axis this is interesting we see the ball nut here right here you could see these screws that are engaged in the ball nut and they're out about one inch so I naturally asked him I said look did you were you working on the machine did you unscrew them? no I haven't run the machine in months these, I'm assuming, as well as he, and you can see over here is another screw. It's barely in the picture. These screws are out about an inch. They weren't even threaded in to the actual ball nut, guys. Once again, could have been completely avoided with some snapshots or a video of the machine running of the transmission. You want to see a video of everything, of everything, okay? With the, with, with the same amount of detail of your first child being born, that's the amount of detail you want to see, Okay? Because this is ridiculous. I mean, I don't know what else to say from this. Uh, going on from there, it gets worse. His Z-axis. Once again, we're right here. You can see we've got linear rails. This is really comical that we're using linear rails and we have no bearing block again. Totally missing a bearing block. So these motors are just the coils and the shaft, the lateral force on them. And, and now seeing a Z, when you're using a rigid coupler, you're pulling on that motor, you're just constantly having excess force in the vertical uh, position pulling on that motor constantly. With the bearing block, it locks the actual uh, ball screw in place so you don't have that. All your motors are supposed to be doing is providing torque and just revolving the ball screw. It rotates it. That's it, guys. That's what we're trying to do. Keep everything in place. The transmission typically supports all of the actual load of the system, and that's in an ideal design. Okay, the transmission should be supporting all of it. And when you're using linear rails, again, that's an excellent way to go as far as smoothness and accuracy. And the ball screw, you know how I feel about ball, ball screws. They're awesome. But again, we've got to look at the overall design here. We see the rigid coupler, once again, red flag, and you can see exactly what they did. As a matter of fact, it doesn't even look like, at least from this angle, it looks like it's all threaded. They just went right in. They didn't even have an unthreaded portion where the ball screw actually inserted into the coupler. Okay, if you see this on any axis of your machine, I'll say it again, run. Okay, do not negotiate with the vendor. Do not try to have the vendor fix anything. Run. This is inexcusable, and it's, a, it's just butchering your machine. That's the easiest way to put it. What the unit should look like, and I wanted to show you guys what it should look like. Here is what the bearing block looks like. You can see that we have the unthreaded part of the actual ball screw. Here's the locking mechanism. They're just using a collar right here. And that then supports everything you have here. And you can see this is the proper way to have the linear rail set up. Here's our bearing block. 
here is where our motor coupler would go and our motor mounts right here and the other end of the coupler gets mounted there and you're done okay this is the way it should have been done now a lot of guys will look at this and say, well, you know what? This is not that much work to fix. Actually, it's a lot of work to fix. This is all done already um, on the machine. And in order to install that bearing block, it's not as easy as just saying, well, I'm just going to drill holes and I'm good. We don't even know if this ball screw at this point is even accurately aligned. I mean, it's just screw, it's just inserted in the opposite ends bearing block and then naturally run over across the span of the machine into the motor. So if this is off five or ten thousands here, what do you think is happening? I mean, that's exa it's putting all that force on that motor and that explains your inaccuracy as the machine is cutting. You don't know what's cutting what. And then in order to put that bearing block on the actual chassis with the chassis ca or cast so it doesn't disassemble, it's very difficult to do accurately, especially when you figure out that that bearing block needs to be perfectly squared to the opposite end. And that's why I'm telling you guys, be very, very careful because realistically now this client has to buy all new ball screws, new couplers, and now do the bearing block upgrade. Okay? That is a pain in the ass. He's, he's dealing with downtime. He's dealing with if this is a potential startup company, I mean, can you afford to invest another thousand to three thousand dollars to uh, basically retrofit a machine's transmission that that you shouldn't have ever even had to touch, especially when you paid a company for a turnkey solution? This is what I'm telling you to be careful with. I hope this video saves at least one of you. Actually, I hope it saves many of you, but um, unfortunately, I know many of you don't watch the videos to the end. You'll skim through it. And I'm hoping that stops because when I make these videos, I want you to see all the detail. And this is what I'm talking about. I mean, I can't make this stuff up. These pictures are just ridiculous. And again, you guys have to protect yourself. Don't blame the Chinese importers. Don't blame them. The vendors over in China are not to blame. You're to blame if you purchase machines like this. You need to do your due diligence, ask the right questions. If you're unaware of what you're doing, Get with an engineer. I don't care who it is. If it isn't me, get with somebody else that you trust and pay them. Of course, pay them for their time and do it right. Say, hey, I'm looking at this machine. Can you look at this? Let me tell you what. If you end up paying that guy 100 bucks to survey that machine and it saves you thousands, tell me where you lost money. <laughs> and I'm telling you easily thousands. That's, that's potential lost time, which we know. Startups can't, like I said, most of them can't afford that kind of screw up. This guy has been down for months this way now. And that's why I'm telling you these are not quick fixes, guys. So, I, again, I hope this has helped you guys. I hope it's educated you. You know, we're always constantly learning. I want you guys to know as much as possible. Keep full transparency. And, again, when you purchase overseas, explain to the vendor you want full transparency. I want at least 60 to 100 pictures. I want to see the machine moving. I want to see everything. You can ask as many questions as possible. I get it. You want to save money. But save money without biting your ass because in the end, you're just going to come to you know me or someone else and say retrofit the machine and it'll cost you thousands of dollars. And if you don't have to do that just by asking questions, then, I mean, I just don't see the problem with that. You know, take the time and, and do it right. So, again, if you guys do have questions and, you, and again, uh, you request any kind of quotes, if you need parts, message me direct at storm2313 at gmail.com. If you don't get in touch with me there, um, again, I am really busy, so I know many of you have been very patient with me, and I appreciate that. You can message me at eDealer Direct, and that's my eBay store. I will put the links in the description as usual. And to all my subscribers, I love you guys. I'll keep the videos coming. I know many of you are finding these videos really helpful. And again, whether you're retrofitting an older machine, whether you're looking at a new machine, all of these videos pertain to any machine. That's the beauty of it. Whether you're buying old stuff, whether you're buying stuff in the States, whether you're buying stuff overseas, typically what we're seeing with this kind of these kind of issues is coming from overseas but that being said please don't feel that we don't see shoddy work like this in the states it does happen in the states and it's typically done on used equipment guys ask the right questions especially from factories selling equipment dirt cheap you go to an automation auction you better look at that machine head over heels because i'm telling you now you start fixing you know 
uh, the higher end equipment when we're dealing with more professional units, bridge ports, maze acts, uh, those, those machines are in a totally different category when we're retrofitting and dealing with hardware issues. So review as much as you possibly can. So again, I hope this video has been helpful. Thank you all. Take care.